guys, this is Raisha, and I welcome you all back to my YouTube channel. In today's podcast, we have a very special guest. Sagurika Nag is a fifth-year student at IIT BHU. She is the recipient of the Dard Wise Scholarship and carried out research in the Technical University of Munich in Germany this year. She is pursuing an integrated dual degree in pharmaceutical engineering and technology, and has also interned at IIT Kharagpur. and landed internships in the US, UK and now Germany. Thank you so much Sagurika for joining. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to be here. I'm sure a lot of students will be eager to know your journey because you have exemplary background. So if you could kindly walk us through the entire Dardwise scholarship application process that will be really great. My research area is computational biology and bioinformatics. So I am in this field since the last 3 years. So I've st- I started initially with research at my own institute, then I applied for a few internships and gradually I began developing interest in this subject and I had seniors who had already been a part of this Dardwise scholarship which is why I applied. Application is a bit more complicated than the others like my tax because there's a lot of paperwork that you need to do and you need to get documents from the german host you need it from your institute then visa documents so it is a very complicated process and you need someone to guide you i think especially in this internship once open the call for the internship the next thing you do is you look for professors then once you have a host who said yes i'll take you for an internship you take the required documents from them you take the required documents from your institute and then you fill out the application form you upload your cv sop and all that and then you submit your application once that is done i think in the month of feb you receive the results yes. and then you can look for accommodation then you go for visa book your flights and finally you're in germany that's a great overview for the entire application process my first question is like when you got to know about the dardwise scholarship so how did you begin the search for the university you want to apply to or the professor that you mm-hmm. want to learn with there are two three ways to go about the first one is i was looking at the tus i was looking at the max planck institutes i was looking at the german cancer research centers so these were my top picks and i went to their department which was of interest and then went to the faculty page once you go to the faculty page you can see the professors and their research areas you can go to their websites so from there you can shortlist the professors says that are of interest to you and when you look at the web page a lot of times they often mention that we are looking for interns or uh, they can mention that that we are completely full and we have no positions for interns so looking at the professor's web page is a very useful thing to do this is one method that you can go about the second method is if you are in a institute where your seniors have already done this internship and they are in the same field as yours you can just ask them which professors did they mail because those professors already know about the that wise internship and they know that your home institute students already go there and then the third procedure would be if your prof knows someone in germany so they can directly recommend you you could go to their google scholar page and see what is the research area in which they are publishing papers so okay. from there you could maybe read a paper and you could like when you cold mail the professor you could mention that i read this paper of yours and i found it really interesting and i would like to do something related so that is a very good way to you know grab an attention because the prof is it knows that you are aware about the research area you have already summarized the project selection process so how did you approach the professor when you cold email a professor what i usually do is i address the professor then i talk a little bit about myself that i am this and this i'm pursuing this and i'm interested in pursuing an internship under your guidance via the dardwise internship program which will be fully funded like this is important to mention because they know that they don't need to provide anything i'll only intern if i get selected by the dardwise internship and it would be fully funded so this is the first paragraph that i have the next paragraph is how i am interested in their research like i read this paper or i heard there's some seminar or i am aware of their research via some professor or something like that that is how you establish the connection and then i say i've interned at these places already and i have these skills to support this particular project so once you have done that then you can just move on to the last paragraph that i would like to set up a meet with you talk to you more and i would like to know what is the latest research that is being conducted in your lab something like that okay that's great so i wanted to ask how many professors did you reach out to and were you happy with the final project which you landed in i reached out to about 7 professors and i got positive replies from 3 of them 
so I didn't have to do a lot of mailing because I made sure that my mails were crisp they included everything that was required I know people who you know send out 200 300 mails which is a very generic email that I am this I'm interested in your research and I would like to intern but usually the success ratio of such mails is less so I would suggest that if you are emailing like take out some time and specialize that email once you had drafted the contents of the email did you also attach a CV along with it I attached only CV no cover letter and transcripts I just mentioned that if you require any other documents feel free to ask me all right all right got the yeah. point so there's also one very important question that like students have in mind is how should they draft their CV my CV starts with my name then contact information like email ID phone number LinkedIn Twitter all these and then it is followed by my education so I only include my college education I don't include my school education percentages in my CV and next I talk about the relevant experiences the previous internships I've had followed by the projects that I've done and then I have a section for publications and then I have a section for conference presentations then achievements and I think extracurriculars followed by relevant courses in that relevant course section I have academic courses and online courses what about someone who wants to apply for the Dardwise internship but they don't have relevant research experience. When you are into research, you usually begin with doing research at your home institution. So at least you need to have one, two projects or something to demonstrate that you have those research abilities. Although if you are really passionate about it and you can demonstrate that in your letter of motivation, then I think still you can apply. But I would suggest to have at least a few projects or some internships, some experience before you apply. Should we draft the LOR and who should we take it from? That specifies that that the LOR should be from someone at your home institution. So like my previous internships were abroad, so I did not ask the LOR from them. And you should always ask the LOR from someone under whom you conducted a research or you've done a project because then they can talk about your research abilities, your problem solving abilities. If you ask an LOR from a prof under whom you just done a course or a class, they would be able to say that they are hardworking, they got this grade in my subject, but they would not be able to talk about you more. So I think a strong LOR would be where they talk about your research abilities. So take it from a prof under whom you've done research search or they know you well. How did you draft your letter of motivation which got you selected for the Dartwise internship? Since I'd already been a part of a few internships, I had an idea on how to draft a letter of motivation or a statement of purpose. So I usually begin with talking about myself, how I got interested into research and what I aspire to be. So that is usually my first paragraph. And then I go into how I started research, like it was started with a few online courses, then how did I approach professors and how did I back my first few projects followed by my internships? What part of the internship I contributed the most, which was really important, followed by how this internship, the Dardwise internship would be a very valuable opportunity for me. I justify about how I have the relevant skills that I'm going to use in this current project. And that is how I end my letter of motivation. I think it could be personal, like from person to person, it would differ. Like someone could focus on the fact that how they got into research, some event had occurred, which like helped them uh, get into research or something about their recent experience or how they shifted from this field to that field. So it could be a bit personal to the individual applying. I think we have summarized like all the things which are relevant for the application process. So like in yeah. the end, I would like to ask, how was your internship experience like? I think it was a wonderful experience because this was my first time traveling alone, uh, you know, to a country abroad. So that was a very big thing. And I really liked the project that I was going to work on. So I had received offers from MyTax and DAD both and the wow. DAD internship. <laughs> yeah so the dad internship was something that I was really interested in because it involved deep learning so I was uh, excited about the project and I think we had a lot of people from our college who got selected so there were five people who were going to Munich from our college itself okay. so so there That's was a complete down. group <laughs> yeah we were traveling together and all so the project was good I got to explore Europe I went to Paris Austria I'm happy I got to see the Alps that's wonderful like if you you know get the opportunity to explore abroad at such a young age and that too you know you are earning money so that's something that you can you know pat yourself on the back that you are doing such a great job what is the advice that you would like to give to the students watching 
I would say apply early. Don't wait for the deadline because there is a lot of documentation that has to be done. So you know, get the documents prepared beforehand. Then I would say be aware of the vacation that is going on in Germany because a lot of times you apply and you receive the message that the prof is on a holiday and they'll be able to respond after this or this period. So I think it is important to be aware of that holiday period also because then the prof would be busy and your application would be incomplete. So the these two things i would recommend is a really good opportunity and everybody should take the advantage of this absolutely that wise is a very prestigious opportunity like i got the opportunity to do my tax and you in fact got got <laughs> offer from two places so that's yeah. something to really brag about so that's great <laughs> thank you so much sagorika for sharing your knowledge with the students it will surely benefit you know students who are planning to pursue the dart wise scholarship this year and so forth and i have shared all the important links uh, in the description down below and if you have any doubts regarding the dart wise scholarship you can directly reach out to sagorika on her social links mentioned in the description and you can leave your doubts also in the comment section below so thank you once again sagorika for sharing your knowledge and coming to this channel thank you so much for having me bye bye bye